Hello, my name is Dr. Venditti, and today we're going to talk about um, how paper recycling and paper affects people, affects society. So, very important topic. Okay, so some of our objectives for today are first to like, let's just kind of appreciate how paper recycling impacts, impacts us on a day-to-day -day basis. Every day we kind of come into contact with paper recycling and what message does it send? And then we'll look at other overall societal impacts that paper recycling has. And then finally we'll review some of the environmental impacts of recycling versus virgin paper. Um, what the differences in environmental impacts between those two systems are. Okay, let's get started. So we've got a picture here and what you see is a roadside. This is actually in England and uh, you can see the litter on the side. Well, just kind of take a second, just kind of look at that and just think about it. How does it make you feel? Okay. You can see that there's a lot of debris. It's plastic, it's metals, it's paper, but paper is part of it. And this is really not the way we want to live and this is not where we want to live. So this really impacts us. So that's one picture. Here's another one. How does this make you feel? This is a landfill and what you can see is um, a huge truck dumping debris on the ground and then there's some scrapers and scoopers that are moving the debris around and putting a little bit of topsoil over top of it but just kind of burying it and making these large mountains of trash. Okay, So that's a typical landfill. Again, probably doesn't make you feel that good. All right, so now let's just kind of see how paper recycling, what kind of messages that sends to people. If you look here, we've got um, recycling bins. Um, one's in an office, one's at a park. And you can see that paper is one of those. And what it does, what message does that send to, to the person walking by? If you think about it, there's this subtle message that what people do and their actions, that can impact the environment. So every time you see a paper recycling bin, it makes a connection between a person and the environment. And it, and it asks the person, what are you doing that can impact the environment? And it's also saying, hey, you can do something positive. Recycle some paper. That's going to be a positive thing. Um, here's another example. Recycling bin in an office. Um, I sit down in this office almost every day in my business career. And that blue bin always mentions to me or gives me that message that I can, my actions um, can positively impact the environment. Um, you can see these recycling bins at the workplace. Um, here's a shopping mall or a grocery store and you can see that the boxes are being recycled. Again, it's a constant reminder of workers or anybody that passes through that store when they're collecting the boxes that recycling is possible and it's an action that can help the environment. Okay, so I think the point that I'm trying to make is in contrast to that litter on the side of the road, whenever you see a recycling bin, whether it's at work, home, or play, those are constant reminders that people and the environment are connected. And that things that we do impact the environment and that we can increase our recycling and do things positive for the environment. Okay, So in a sense, paper recycling and the systems that we use to collect the paper, um, it's connecting people and their thoughts and actions with environmental impacts on a daily basis. And this is really important because there are other things that affect the environment um, like water use or electricity or power use or resource use. And these recycling systems and bins all help remind us and put it in front of our faces so that we understand that this is important. Okay. So that's one thing, the constant reminder that recycling is important and that we're connected to the environment. Now the other thing about um, paper recycling in society is the contribution it makes to jobs and to people. Now in this list right here, I'm I list down some of the different things that happen to paper. So let's just imagine we're through a cycle and we're, we're, we have um, paper that's being recycled at mills to make new paper. Well then, that there's many jobs in that mill that are uh, that are associated with the recycling, and then we've got the transportation of that paper 
to let's say converters again people that drive trucks and transport materials and trains they're involved then we have converters that change the paper rolls to products so a big roll of paper is printed on it's stapled bound and cut to make books or booklets all those converters are oper are using the paper recycling. And then we've got another transport. We have distributors of the products. Then we have stores that retail the paper products. Finally, we have the users that use the books, that use the toilet paper, that use the um, napkins. Then after that, we've got our recycling bins and the collection agencies. And then the collection agencies bring that paper to sorters and packers. And then we have transport to the recycle mill. So you can see that this is all a big cycle and that this circle, as it happens, joins a lot of people together all around paper recycling. Very important and very significant contribution to society. Now, if we just kind of strictly look at jobs that paper, the paper industry brings to us, um, we can estimate that just in paper manufacturing alone, there's about 34,000 employees. The total salaries is about $3.5 billion um, with an average salary about $100,000. So these are very good paying jobs. Um, the jobs break down to about three hourly wage jobs per one salary job. Um, you hear a lot about United States losing manufacturing and losing some of the middle class jobs. Paper industry is one of those industries that really is keeping jobs in America. Um, there's also the indirect jobs that are um, created by the manufacturing jobs. So for every one manufacturing job, there are complementary industries that help support and those will bring in two jobs for every one manufacturing job. So if we take that about 35,000 employees in the paper industry and we multiply it by three, we get over 100,000 total jobs, very good paying jobs with benefits um, supplied by the paper industry. And if we think about recycling in that whole paper industry, we can approximate that about half the jobs and half the salaries are for the recycling industry. And so now you can see that re the recycling of paper um, creates jobs and wealth for people and good standards of living through their salaries. Okay, now let's move on to environmental impacts. And um, I presented this before in a lecture previous, but um, I want to revisit it again because this is one of the most important things. When we la recycle paper, we avoid landfilling. And this graph shows um, in, great, in a great way how um, paper recycling has reduced landfilling. So back, um, let's just say, around the year 2000, we were putting about 40 million tons of paper into landfills a year in the United States. And through recycling and other efforts, we have reduced that down to about now to about 22, 23 million tons per year. So we have reduced the amount of paper going to landfills almost by a half, okay? And we also know that paper is the number one um, component of landfilled material. So um, the paper recycling industry has made a great, tremendous stride in reducing our use of landfills. Um, this graph also shows that um, we're recycling about 55 million, 52 to 55 million tons per year of paper. That's a large quantity. And not only is it important because it diverts from landfills, but we're making important pro products for society. Okay, now landfilling is just one um, aspect of the environmental impacts. Um, there are a lot of different environmental impacts that um, paper manufacturing can um, uh, cause. So what I'm doing here in this graph is I'm comparing a virgin paper. So let me write that down, virgin paper. And we'll compare that to a recycled copy paper. Okay, so there's recycled. 
And what you can do is look down the different rows, there are different environmental impacts. So we can start off with wood use. If we're going to make, and then this quantity, um, 15 million tons per year, is approximately what we consume in printing and writing grades. So if we were to make all our printing and writing paper by virgin paper, um, we would use about 55 million tons of wood. Now, if we recycle, we can save that 55 million um, tons of wood, okay? Um, that's kind of a little bit misleading because we need the wood and we need the virgin paper in order to recycle. So um, recycling is good and it saves trees, but we also feel like virgin paper is important because it's the raw material for recycling. Okay, and then you can look at net energy and um, for virgin paper, it takes about 488 million BTUs per year and it's 326 million for recycling. So what you can see is that virgin paper takes more net energy. It actually emits um, more greenhouse gases relative to recycling. The water consumption is much higher. There's more solid waste. There's more NOx, which cause particulates and um, air pollution problems. And we can kind of go down the list. And what you'll see is that um, for many of these environmental indicators, like energy or SO2, which causes acid rain, or particulates, which is a human health problem, hazardous air pollutants, which also impact our health, um, volatile organic compounds that impact environment and people, um, and you can go on and on, and then water pollution. For the most part, when we use recycled paper, we're saving some environmental impacts. So that's a plus. Again, this is a way that recycling touches society and helps improve our lives. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to talk to you about was just in general, what are some of the social impacts of paper or recycled paper? And it often goes, you kind of is under, paper is underappreciated. And basically, paper serves so many needs that society has and does it so well and we don't think about it too often. But I just kind of list some of them right here. Um, if you think about all the food that we eat and how it's transported and stored and frozen and then cooked, um, paper and board boxes and containers really help us um, efficiently use that food and keep it safe for us to eat. Um, everyone kind of understands writing materials are, are very important to society to properly communicate information. Things like parking tickets, um, tickets to a concert, educational materials, signs, labels, safety warnings. Paper is one of the uh, most effective ways to communicate even in this computer world that we live in. Um, we also can talk about health and sanitation. Kitchen and bath towel um, are in tissues. Um, these are important things that actually um, keep our homes and our workplaces and, uh, more healthy and more sanitary um, and very important. Um, if we had to rely on, let's say, fabric towels to clean the kitchen or we didn't have toilet tissue, things like that, um, that would cause a lot more um, infections and diseases and things. Um, everyone kind of uh, really can appreciate this next one, shipping containers that protect valuable items during transport. As we move into this um, online shopping uh, culture that we're in, um, every single product is mo moved within one or maybe even two boxes. And those boxes have multiple um, utility um, they protect the items, they communicate information about what's inside it, um, and they sell the items sometimes. But basically, we're using containers and shipping of products more and more now, and paper is the biggest um, contributor to keeping these things safe and effective. And then finally, we have personal care products such as diapers, um, female um, hygiene products, um, senior citizens and young, young people are using um, these kinds of hygiene products that kind of keep us healthy and safer. All right, um, there are general social impact categories that I'd also like to mention, things like human rights, working conditions, health and safety. Um, paper recycling 
um, is a positive contributor to all these things. Um, uh, human rights goes without saying that um, have to be respected in manufacturing sites and along the supply chain and human rights are strictly enforced within paper recycling. Um, working conditions. Mills follow very strict U.S. guidelines for um, safety and working conditions. Labor laws are strictly enforced and the whole idea is every time I go to a paper mill I see that the mill, the, the company or the mill, they want to keep their people safe and happy have healthy, happy employees that can enjoy their jobs and enjoy outside of their jobs for their lifetime. Um, you see, if you go to a paper recycling mill, they work hard to keep their um, mill clean and safe so that accidents don't occur. They meet environmental regulations. Um, all mills are trying to minimize um, any type of waste materials for profit and for the benefit of society. Um, the other thing is that they're recycling paper products and they're working hard to make sure that those recycled paper products are safe. And what that means is that they're looking at their raw material, the collected paper that comes into their mill, and they're saying, hey, is this safe and suitable for recycling? And then their products, um, are their products safe and suitable for, for use? Um, other things like cultural heritage, um, you might not kind of put the connection together, but paper recycling actually helps our cultural heritage in, in a very simple way. When we recycle paper, we reduce landfills. When we reduce landfills, we reduce the land that's taken up by the landfills. And landfills are always placed very close to where people live because it's not economical to transport them far. So what's happening is when we recycle paper, we're reducing landfills and we're, we're actually preserving historically usable land around communities so that they can continue to use them. And that's a very powerful contribution of um, paper recycling and uh, society. Um, governance, uh, our recycle mills um, pay taxes in support of the government and abide by the laws. Um, doesn't need to be emphasized. And then there's socioeconomic. We talked about how many jobs and the wealth that, company, that is created for companies and people that own those companies. Um, very powerful. So let me just kind of summarize. Um, first thing I'm, I tried to emphasize was that recycling containers and the systems for recycling paper are constant reminders that people's actions impact the environment and that they can do something positive to influence the environment. Um, then we talked about jobs. And the paper industry in total has about 30,000 employees. They have well-paying jobs with benefits and indirectly promotes about 70,000 more jobs. So this is a great contribution for the paper industry. And then paper recycling is about half of that. Um, paper recycling reduces the need for landfills. So again, landfills are competing for land with other uses that society would much rather have. Um, in general, recycled paper has reduced environmental impact. So we talked about greenhouse gases, water consumption, um, NOx and SOx, um, air emissions and water emissions. All these are positively um, influenced when we uh, recycle paper. And then just in general, um, paper recycling works within and for society to help think people be safe, to preserve cultural and human rights, um, to act within government and, um, and improve our hygiene. And these are all really well served by recycled paper. Thank you for the, your attention. This ends our lecture.